Well, here we are at Olympic National Park, main entrance. It's Thursday, June the, what day is it, the 5th? I think it's the 5th. Day 13 of our trip. We officially start the second half. Beautiful day here in Port Angeles. Not a cloud in the sky. Couldn't ask for better weather. You pan over. You can see uh, if I get to the coast. Way off in the distance there. The blue water of the Juan de Fuca Strait. Uh, Vancouver Island is off there in the distance. You can see a ship out there. We're taking the ferry to Victoria tomorrow. We've decided that. We're going to go to the Butchard Gardens. And I think we're going to take Charlie with us. The ferry allows dogs and the gardens allow dogs. In fact, dogs are welcome at the garden. Maybe they feel it's free fertilizer. Who knows? Temperature here is about 65 degrees. Uh, barely a breeze, but absolutely gorgeous. The visitor center off that direction. Elena already left me behind. We took a couple of stills here at the sign. So with that, we're going to shut down here, go to the visitor center, and then head up to Hurricane Ridge and take some pictures okay. up there just before one o'clock and we're here at the Hurricane Ridge I'm looking to I think the west and I'm going to pan all the way across to the east the sun is currently behind a tiny little cloud in the sky it's going to get brighter shortly Beautiful scene. Elena and Charlie are having lunch there. Elena doesn't know I'm filming her. That's the only way I can catch her. She knows how to take a bite out of the sandwich though, doesn't she? That was a pretty massive bite she took off there. Let's get some close-up shots of these uh, peaks. Again, beautiful weather. You can't even feel you, barely a breeze blowing. Gorgeous. I remember coming here as a kid 40 years ago, but I don't remember this scene. I just remember playing in the snow, which there isn't much snow here. So they've had a pretty light winter up here as well. I'm trying to pan a little bit faster. I don't want to spend too much time on this. That's a nice peak there. All of these little peaks have names. Unlike the other Vent National Parks with volcanic mountains, you know, you see this one cinder cone stick straight up in the air and you can tell what the summit is, but here it's more difficult. I'm panning around towards Mount Olympus. These aren't very tall mountains either, only 7,800 feet in elevation. But they get so much weather. 
rainforest on the west side and you know more snow on the east. Mount Olympus is over in here somewhere. Not sure which one it is. Maybe it's that one. Alright, that's it. Time for some lunch. Alright, we're still up here at Hurricane Ridge. We took a little trail to the other side. And there's Port Angeles down there. And the Juan de Fuca Strait, Vancouver Island, way off in the distance. Not as pretty of a view from this side. Still a little bit of snow on the ground, not a great deal. And then off in the distance again are the uh, Olympic Mountain Range. With a few tourists. Not very many people up here, really. is on the bench as I film. That's gonna right. Well we're on our way out of Hurricane Ridge and we see a family of what we think are deer. I don't know. I have a hard time telling a deer and an elk apart. But I'm pretty sure those are deer. So they're just uh, looking at us. They're obviously used to people. Just kind of feeding on the hillside. There was another one out there somewhere. There it was. So that's our little bit of nature. At least it's not a bear. So with that now we'll head back down towards the uh, visitor center in Port Angeles. Okay, we're at a lookout. Getting, trying to get the camera to focus in on it. Victoria is way out there, a ferry crossing the sound. Again, camera autofocus having a hard time zooming in. Bellingham is out that way to the east. Mount Baker's out there in the haze somewhere too. But I don't think it's visible. I can't see it with the naked eye. Here's another deer nibbling on the flowers. Practically right where I was standing, maybe 20, 30 feet from where I was standing earlier. He's going to town on that. Yeah, look at that. Elena's worried he's going to get killed. But I suspect this thing, know, this guy knows how to get around. Okay, it's uh, 2.30. Now we're at the Port Angeles waterfront. There's a vessel in the foreground. We're going to go to the Black Ball Ferry office and buy our tickets for tomorrow. We gotta, and we gotta determine where we're gonna go out to dinner too. There's the Black Ball office, and that's we're here at the ferry building. We're gonna check that place out. It's right next door. Once we get our tickets, and you can see the Olympic Mountains, where we just came from. Up well, ahead. it's my lucky day, Dairy Queen, two days in a row. As we walk the hustling and bustling streets of downtown Port Angeles. Okay, three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm up here on a four-story observation deck on top of the Port Angeles boardwalk or the pier that goes out into the little bay here. That's looking east. Here's a panoramic shot of a beautiful sunny day in Port Angeles, temperature about 70 degrees. Olympic National Park and the Olympic Range distance. Elena was down there 
somewhere with Charlie. I think she's moved on. She was down in there somewhere. There's a marine center in that building straight ahead. That's where she went to. And then looking towards the west, again, there's that big ship out there. And Victoria and Vancouver Island out that way. Five o'clock on June 5th. Elena stayed back at the trailer to take a little rest along with Charlie. And I'm out here uh, taking a quick tour of the Elwha Valley. We're going to go inside and take a look. Well, I'm standing here at the Altair Bridge. And this is the Elwha River heading north towards the Strait of Juan de Fuca where it empties out. Pretty seen here. River's not flowing quite as uh, forcefully, I guess, as it would normally. See a lot of debris in there. Again, a pic picture perfect afternoon. The road that goes all the way up or down into the valley, as you can see, is closed. That's again because they're draining the lakes from the removal of the dams and they're restoring the natural habitat. So that was as far as I could go. That explains why there aren't that many people down here. And here's another look heading north towards the Olympic Mountains. Still a very pretty scene. I can imagine what this must look like with salmon running upstream. That's the game plan at least. That's what they're doing all this work for, to restore that habitat. Well, now I've put the truck in four-wheel drive. I've gone off-road a little bit on a five-mile trail, Whiskey Bend Road. It's a one-way road with turnouts. Fortunately, I've only had one other car going in the opposite direction so far. I've driven about two miles. I'm hoping it leads to something uh, worth seeing. We'll find out when we get there. There's a little waterfall three miles up on this Whiskey Creek Road. Well, I got to the top of the Whiskey Trails Road and uh, it was a trailhead and the shortest trail was a mile and a half. And I didn't have time for that. I got to get back to the RV park and get dinner started. So I'm descending the five miles now back down this one-way road. The, uh, there is a view of the valley although it's obstructed with some trees, but I think I'll pull off to the side about halfway down and I'll stop and take some pictures through the trees of uh, what used to be a lake and now is a, a valley under restoration. Well, I'm off the side of the road and here's a picture of the drained lake. I think that could be Lake Aldwell, maybe a different lake. And you can see the remnants of a dam that they're in the process of dismantling up ahead there with the crane work. There were two lakes up here, two dams. This could be the upper dam, I'm not sure. Sorry for the shaky picture. But again, they're trying to restore that natural habitat. And I'm sure in a few years, maybe 10 years or so, it will look totally different. Like a dam was never here. Anyhow, this, uh, ooh, let me, let me zoom out. This dirt road is getting my truck all damn dirty. I'm going to have to wash it now. We're only about two miles down. I got three more to go and uh, I'm ready to get back on asphalt, pavement. Although it's beautiful here, you, can't, you cannot deny the beauty. Such thick and lush forest. All right, back on the road. Here's another little waterfall by the side of the road, about halfway down. Ferns everywhere. All right, well, this is going to be the end of the day. I'm at the base of the Elwha River. 
the Olympic Mountains in the background. Again, a beautiful scenery. Green, green forest. The river working its way downstream. Shooting into the sun a little bit now. Spectacular. We enjoyed the day in Olympic National Park. We're going to give it a break tomorrow, go to Victoria, British Columbia, and then hit the western end of the park on Saturday. Before we depart Sunday morning and start heading south for home. That's it from the beautiful Olympic Peninsula. Friday, May, June 6th, day 14 of our trip. We're on the Coho Ferry. Just getting ready to head out of Port Angeles for Victoria. 10 after 8 in the morning. Beautiful day again. Cloud 8.15 and we're pulling out right on time. 90 minutes now to Victoria Harbor. Well, we're picking up speed now. There's another shot of the Olympic mountain range. And there's the dock over there. Elena's inside with Charlie. There's other dogs on the boat. Beautiful day. Let me try to find Elena. She's in here somewhere. There she is. There's Elena. Charlie must be waiting for me. She's waving me inside. Well, we're sitting in the lounge at the Coho. Very calm seas. However, the vessel is still rocking a little bit. Elena got up to walk around. Here's a look for my sister. The jogs of old memories of what this thing looked like. Very few people on board. Charlie's taking it all in. Maybe 200 people on board max, if that. Okay, we're about a half hour into the voyage. Swaying side to side pretty good, even though the seas are calm. Definitely not a cruise ship, but the scenery is worth a million bucks. I'm gonna, I've got Charlie with me. He's not doing, doesn't want to, he wants to know why the ground keeps moving. I'll go to the front and take some video up there. In memory of Uncle Paul Ponzi, Anybody in the mood for a cheeseburger and fries? Well, Uncle Paul, it's not a cheeseburger and fries, but it will have to do for breakfast. Maybe the cheeseburger and fries on the way back. Here's the view from the front observation lounge. Like I said earlier, the ferry is maybe a quarter to a third full. Now to go out into the wind. There's the bell. United States over there.
it'll shoot more when we get closer. Alright, we're approaching Victoria Harbor entrance. Sailboat out there. Back there. And we're going to make a turn into the harp. There's a plane landing on the landing strip. Or actually, on a water plane. Land in the water. Okay, we're approaching the pier. Beautiful harbor. There's the Empress Hotel. We'll get a better shot of that in a little bit. Getting ready to dock. We're almost docked. Okay, we're on the ground in Victoria. Got through customs. Ten o'clock. You can hear the church bells. Elena said she thought I was in a hurry. We're gonna go to the Empress Hotel, pick up a shuttle to the gardens from there. Okay, we're in front of the Empress Hotel. Elena's gonna go in there for a quick uh, restroom break. We're gonna leave in about 10 minutes for the Bouchard Gardens. Oh, okay. Beautiful day, warmer here than it was in Port Angeles, actually. Pan around to the harbor. Charlie's yanking me along. About 35 minutes. There's the harbor. There's the coho that we just came off of. And there's our bus. Okay, we're on the bus, getting ready to head out to the gardens. About a 25 minute ride. Charlie wants some affection. Okay, 11 o'clock. Actually, a little bit after 11. We're here at the gardens. Just entering inside the main plaza. Beautiful here. Not that many people. It's early yet. They've got these hanging flower baskets all over the place. Elena went inside the information office to check on the dog policy. Beautiful day here. Perfect weather, I'd say about 72 degrees. Okay, we're entering the Japanese garden. A lot of hanging pots and flowers there. What a variety of stuff. My goodness. This is the overlook to the sunken garden. We'll be down there shortly. Here we are in the rose garden. You can see the roses are all named. Still spring season not in full bloom yet. 
Summer season starts, I think, on the 14th of June, but close enough. Elena and Charlie are booking on down the road. We're in the Japanese garden, pretty much in the shade. A little babbling brook. Pathway. Not a leaf is out of place. Elena is sitting down with Charlie up ahead there. Probably giving him a rest. We're at the Bouchard Cove lookout. And there's a pretty good sized body of water out there. Just started touring the gardens. Got a long way to go in there yet. More of the Japanese garden. Elena's under that little uh, gazebo thing. I don't think Charlie's going to want to walk across those pavers. No, he's not so sure, Elena. He doesn't want to go over that. Well, he's making it. Come on, Elena. <laughs> now we're at the Star Pond, and I remember this as a kid. It's one of the few things I remember from 40 years ago. And then we were admiring these beautiful flowers here. Everything here is beautiful. Not a tree, out of place. Not a leaf, out of place. Now we're going to head over to the sunken garden and the cove where we were earlier is through those trees there, way off in the distance. Here we are at the Italian gardens. Beautiful again. Elena's got her eye on the gelato stand over here. I think we'll make her visit on our way out. We're over here by the dining room. The other thing I remember are these uh, little horses. I sat on one of those 40 years ago. I'm going to see if the dog wants water. Elena's going to see if Charlie wants water. We may have lunch in there. Okay, here we are in the sunken garden. Arguably the most beautiful section. Elena's well ahead. Spectacular. Okay, I'm at a viewpoint right in the middle of the sunken garden. Big rock I climbed up for a 360 shot of the sunken garden. Elena's down there somewhere. Let me walk over to the other side. Thank you. 
Okay, that's the 360. Okay, here's the lake with the water feature. I remember this too, although that water feature wasn't quite as fancy 40 years ago. Just off from the sunken garden. Another limestone quarry. All filled in. Elena's headed up the path. Let's see what's up there. Okay, we're exiting the sunken garden area. We're climbing away from it. And there's that uh, viewpoint that I was at earlier where I did the 360. One last look from this corner. Staff of 25 full-time gardeners, 250 full-time gardeners, excuse me. And in the summer season, up to 300 gardeners. Now we're up here at the carousel. There's a couple of totem poles over there and an amphitheater. I don't remember the uh, carousel. It's in this covered structure. We'll check it out inside. So we're sitting here having an ice cream and I'm admiring these uh, wind. These, they're not chimes, but they move in the wind. They're very decorative. And of course, as I go to film, they stop. There we go. That one's pretty. Nice design. There's another one. Where? There. They look to be copper. We've just about seen everything here. We're going to head for the exit now. There's the third one that I noticed. Had a great time here. Been here a little over two hours. And we're going to wait for the next bus and take us back to uh, downtown Victoria. Alright, it's 1.40. We're going to take the 155 bus back to town. Standing here in the main entry area, Elena's inside the uh, gift shop. And waiting for her to see if there's anything in there. And then we head out. Had a great time here at the garden. We're back at the waterfront and we're going to go inside the Empress Hotel and check it out. Elena said there's a lot of paneling, British, British wood paneling in there. I guess we got to go in. The Canadian flag flying on a beautiful crystal clear blue day. We're going to go here from the Empress over to the government building just across the street. All right, it's 2.45. I think we're going to take the 3 o'clock ferry back. All three of us are kind of tired. We don't really want to wait until 7.30. That will, that will put us back at the trailer at 10 o'clock tonight. So we're going to take the 3 o'clock ferry back. Here's the provincial British Columbia government uh, seat of government, the government building. Apparently it lights up quite nicely at night. We won't be here to see that. Even if we stayed until 7.30, we won't be here to see that. And people lounging on the grass, enjoying the sun splash day. statue 
and Queen Victoria, which the city is named after. Beautiful architecture. We don't have time to go inside. Obviously a parliamentary type uh, structure. Elena and Charlie caught up with me. They're headed towards the ferry, which is straight ahead. And we better move it because they're going to toot the horn soon. Now we're on board. They just tooted the horn for the five minute call. We'll take one last pan shot of the Victoria Harbor. Museum there. Actually there. The Empress Hotel. Old Town. Very nice. Had a nice short visit here. We were on the ground for about what? Uh, five hours. Quick little, quick little trip to Canada. At least we could say we were here. And the bells are chiming three o'clock. Westminster. That means we should be blowing our horn and heading out any second now. Backing out of the harbor. The little prop plane just landed. A 360 maneuver in the turning basin.
Saturday morning, June the 7th, day 15 of our vacation, starting the third week. And we're here at Lake Crescent, off of the 101, about oh, 12, 15 miles west of Port Angeles. Another pretty day here. A few more clouds in the sky, and it looks like a little more marine layer at the ocean, but still very pleasant. We're headed to the ocean. We're going to go to Rialto Beach and also hopefully to the whole rainforest. It's only uh, 10.30 right now. We got off to an early start. We want to get back relatively early. I've got some chores to do. We've got to do shopping, got to wash the truck. I got to get propane and I got to get things ready for our trip to Hoquiam uh, tomorrow. So there's Lake Crescent. Still at Lake Crescent, I should note that there's some very nice cabins out there uh, the other way across from the lake. I'm trying to hold the camera steady on super zoom. There look to be some nice properties out there. There's some more out there somewhere. Well, maybe there aren't maybe there aren't as many as hey, I thought. 145. We just had lunch. We're here at the Ho River uh, Rainforest. Took us two hours to get here from Port Angeles, and the sun is out. Again, the moss covers a lot of the trees. We're taking the mini trail right now. Well, it's very lush here in the rainforest. Again, moss, ferns, even this big tree here, all covered in moss, I guess. All the way up. We're walking along the shaded path with the wind breeze wisping through the trees, a little babbling stream, very clear water. Elena and Charlie are up ahead. As We're you. continuing on the trail in the Ho Rainforest and there's a display of some Sitka spruce that all grew out of a fallen tree from many years ago. You can see they've overgrown quite significantly the uh, fallen uh, tree. Very tall. Okay, back to catch up with Elena and Charlie. Okay, we're leaving the Ho Rainforest. We stopped at the sign on the way out because there were people here on the way in getting their pictures taken. So we went ahead and got our picture in front of the sign. We left Charlie in the car, but the window rolled down halfway. Next thing I, next thing I know, I hear the dog running down the middle of the street. Elena's yelling at me that I left the window down too low. Dog jumped out of the truck. He's done that a couple of times before. Uh, we were lucky. I, a, tr a truck was coming. I darted into the traffic to stop the truck. So maybe the truck driver would have seen the dog, but that's all we would have needed was to lose Buddy, or excuse me, lose Charlie um, here. The sign is right next to the river which I didn't get a chance to film much of. It's through these trees here. And again, not much, not much water in the river. But obviously, uh, in the winter months, that's a different story. So that's it. Now we're heading for Rialto Beach. 
The goal is to be back in Port Angeles by 5. It's 2.45 and we're here at Rialto Beach. It continues to be overcast here. I guess the clouds never listed, lifted. You can see to the east there, it's brighter. Probably sunny still in Port Angeles. We're going to go check out the beach now. Well, here we are at foggy Rialto Beach. I wish the weather was a little bit better, but you know I'm not going to complain. We've had great weather on this trip so far. Atlanta and Charlie are off in the distance. There's some rock outcroppings out there. You can barely make them through in the fog. Lots of little uh, smooth, rounded uh, rocks and stones on the beach, along with big uh, fallen tree trunks, trees. I don't know how close Charlie's going to want to get to the water. This is looking a little bit to the south, southwest. here to the northwest you can see one of these huge you know trees that God knows how long it's been here out there it looks like some sort of a oh I don't know what you would call it a bluff or a peninsula but it's pretty well shrouded in fog and you can't see it Behind that, the forest. There's a picnic area here too. Some people just set up on these fallen logs and just are having a picnic lunch. A little bit of mist blowing through the air. There's some people having lunch. Elena being led by Charlie again. Charlie's on the sniff for something. This is actually pretty fitting. This uh, this into, this uh, denotes a change now in our itinerary in terms of the first two weeks. We've been at national parks, volcanic, mountainous. Now we're going to be starting beginning tomorrow. We're going to be starting the beach phase where for the next five, six days, we're gonna be along the coast at the beach. How did he like it out there? Yeah, obviously he's very interested in what's, what the sniffing is out there. So I guess with this log, well, with Elena and Charlie and the log, this completes our visit to Olympic National Park. Although tomorrow our hope is to have lunch at Lake uh, Chenal on our way to Hoquiam. So at least we saw it, saw Rialto Beach. And uh, with that, we'll sign off. Well, it's uh, 10 minutes to 4. We're making good time back to Port Angeles. As we drive along the road, we can see again a nice shot of uh, Lake Crescent. Shining bright blue in the sun. I guess that marine layer was only hanging around uh, the tip of the peninsula. Well, 7 o'clock on Saturday night here at the Ilwa Dam RV Park, our last night here in Port Angeles. And tomorrow morning we head out for Hoquiam, about 166 or so miles. It's gonna be a long drive. We found that out today, going almost halfway. 
on US 101 and it took about an hour and a half hour and 45 minutes to go halfway so tomorrow literally the trip is all heading south from here literally this is our northernmost point and now for the remaining nine days we drive south we've been driving north for the last two weeks now it's south heading for home we're going to hope to have lunch at Lake Chenault I think that's how you pronounce it tomorrow uh, we were told by the proprietor at the uh, uh, Mount Haven Resort by Mount Rainier that the restaurant there has a little deck area over the lake very nice place to sit and have a meal so we're gonna try to do that if time permits let will be right around the, it's a little more than halfway to our destination and it will be a good spot to stop if we don't get out of here too late in the morning today was a long drive we put about 200 miles on the truck today uh, driving both to the uh, uh, the Ho rainforest that itself was about 85 miles one way and then the opposite direction to uh, Rialto Beach <clears throat> unfortunately as you see or saw the weather at the beach wasn't the greatest the marine layer came in today and never left and it's still out there in Port Angeles we were out at dinner and uh, doing some shopping it was sunny in Port Angeles but the clouds the marine layer is over the water but yet you can see the hills of Vancouver Island across the way so uh, any any body of water today I guess had the marine layer over it but like I said earlier we're not going to complain about the weather it could have been a lot worse uh, the three weeks that we've two weeks that we've had so far just Crater Lake really um, and this brief time at the Rialto Beach were the only two poor weather spots I got got a chance to redeem myself at Mount Rainier so that's it for tonight tomorrow we head south and we'll send some more pictures and video from our travels tomorrow Sunday June 8th 11 o'clock in the morning we pulled out of the Elwha Dam RV Park at 10.15. We've driven about 36 miles. Garmin says we have 100, 118 to go to Hoquiam. And our plan is still to stop at Lake uh, Chino, uh for lunch there. So that will put us behind. If we don't stop, we would get at the campground at about 1.20, but we're not going to get to the campground probably until about 2.30, maybe even as late as 3 o'clock. More overcast skies today, even in Port Angeles. The sun is fighting to come through, but it really hasn't. We haven't seen the blue sky that we've seen the last four days. So we were lucky to get the benefit of the good weather while we were here. Resting her eyes. Charlie's doing the same. We hope to report more when we get to Lake Chenault. Now we're traveling on US 101 just past the Kalalak Lodge, and I'm right in the middle of a caravan of what looks like uh, 56 and 57 Chevys. My friend Tim DeLeo would appreciate this, and he would know what those cars are. Okay, it's 12.15. We've stopped in a little hamlet called Queets, just off the ocean, for a quick bathroom break. We've been on the road for almost two hours. And Elena's wishing for Red Hots, those little cinnamon-flavored, like jelly bean things. She hasn't been able to find them. I told her, I said, I bet you this little trading post place here has them. Sure enough, they have three bags. She's going to buy them. So she's inside buying her Red Hots. And then we're going to hit, hit the road for Lake uh, Chenault.
and we're probably about 20, 30 miles away from it. We've gone a little over halfway to the RV park. Here she comes, red hots in hand. Life is now good. Crisis averted. Five after one, we're here at Lake Cheneau. Right at the waterfront. Kayaks for rent here. Very pretty. We're gonna have lunch up at the lodge up ahead there. Elena's waiting for me. There's the lodge. Some people in their Adirondack chairs. We're only about 35 miles from the campground on Hoquim. So that's good. We should get there hopefully by 3 o'clock. We're going to go in now and have some lunch. Here's the scene from the back porch of the lodge. We have to go around to the front. Okay, we're inside the lodge. We're going to go into the dining room. Very rustic. And it smells rustic in here. Of course, they get 12 feet of rain a year. Very nice. All right, well, we just had a nice lunch at the Roosevelt Dining Room in Lake Cheneau. I can need okay, all that. We're getting ready to head now the final 35 miles to the RV park in Hopewim. Charlie was, we left Charlie in the trailer and he hightailed it into the truck, so he's ready to, he's ready to do some more traveling. Close the door. Nice area here. You can leave the door open. And we're gonna to we're gonna head south now for Hoquim. I got a dog sit. What do you say, Charlie Brown? You ready to go bye bye in the car? Huh? You ready to go bye bye in the car? You happy to see your bone? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Okay. All right. We're gonna go now. All right. Now, greetings from the Hoquiam River RV Park in Hoquiam, Washington. It's 6.45, approaching dinner time. Elena and I drove the 160 miles from Port Angeles. Uh, uneventfully, took a stop over at uh, Lake Chenal. Had a nice lunch there, took a few pictures and some video. And we pulled into the RV park here about 3.15. Weather was a lot warmer when we got here, nice and sunny. Now the breeze is blowing and it's getting cooler. Set up in a nice pull through space. I didn't even unhitch. We'll head out tomorrow morning for Cannon Beach. A fellow Airstreamer is parked just across from me. Nice people from Boise. I chatted with them for a little bit. We complimented each other on our trailers just had a nice conversation with a family over there in that Allegro motorhome, 1988 model, in pretty good shape for its age. The woman just bought it about a month ago. I guess they're living in it temporarily. Interestingly enough, an older woman that's uh, living there with the couple uh, lived in Hemet for many years, worked at Hemet Valley Medical Center, and retired from there in 2002. So. We had a little something in common, uh, both being from the Hemet area. In terms of a pan shot, nice little campground. It's right on the Hoquiam River. We're maybe not even a half a mile from the ocean. There's about I forget how much how much acres the lady said were here of trails. I want to say nine acres. And it's really nice. Good enough for a one-nighter.
tripod's a little bit uneven today. I was too lazy to level it out. There are some other spots. We seem to be moving a little bit out of the rainforest. Uh, and of course, this we're almost, uh, we're almost at the bottom of the Olympic Peninsula. Elena's doing laundry. I went to get propane, but they're not selling it here for the next couple of days because the people that dispense it are out of town. So I'll get propane when we get to Cannon Beach tomorrow. Check the trip odometer on the truck today since we started our third week uh, yesterday. And I have about 1,875 miles total uh, on the truck. That includes day trips, side trips. So we're booking right along. It's going to be probably somewhere close to 3,000 by the time we get home. Saw on, on the internet that it's 113 in Sacramento today. Uh, we're glad we're not there for that. Uh, hoping that it's not that hot when we do get home. So tonight we're going to have leftovers. Uh, we've got plenty of leftovers from the last couple of uh, nights meals and we're going to take care of some of those leftovers tonight. So that's it for today. We'll film more as we tour what hopefully will be a, a visible Oregon coastline, Washington and Oregon coastline. We're going to go over the Astoria Bridge uh, and uh, make our way to Cannon Beach. Hopefully uh, the scenery uh, will be visible. That's it for now.